night, baby, because I do got a shirt. If Angel suspects me, I'm in danger. This is very serious. Champagne is just, you know, acting crazy. And there's no consequences for him. The COs here, they can definitely use the improvement. I gotta turn it up a notch. I did not think things would get to this point. What if her suspicions would come back, that maybe I am 60 days in and she would start telling people again and all the work I had done to get people to believe my cover story would be for naught. the whole kissing incident happened with Betsy. It's been kind of weird, you know, not knowing where Betsy's head was at or, or what she'd be thinking about me. I was concerned what might transpire. I wasn't sure, you know, if Betsy was going to be mad, if she you know, after thinking about things, she was gonna think I'm part of the show again and she was gonna go around telling people. She has a very good pulse in the whole unit. The whole unit loves her. She, she could turn the whole unit against me in a heartbeat if she wanted to. How does that make you feel? That's, that's, that's nerve wracking. <laughs> So Betsy was called out uh, to get released. Good for her, but sad. Nonetheless. <laughs> Let you all stay in jail, you better come out. When I realized that Betsy was being called to go roll up, you know, a, a few different emotions went through me. I was excited for her, uh, first and foremost, because I know this is what she wanted, and this will better her life. But at the same time, getting close with Betsy was my greatest opportunity to get the type of information that I, I was wanting in the jail. So with Betsy leaving, I'm going to be losing a major player in my investigation. I felt like I was gonna to have to start at ground zero and I knew I had to step it up because I don't have a lot of time left. I don't know, Magic, wake up, what I wanna to do today. See you over there, man. I try to see you over there. It's my last week. Uh, I want to keep pushing the COs. Three minutes, three minutes. To really, like, weed out bad officers, corrupt officers. So what I do, just little, little stuff that pisses off COs. I know it pisses me off. At my facility, you purposely wait until he say lockdown, then go jump in the shower. Or, or you go hurry up and go jump on the toilet like you're using the uh, restroom. Who else is in here with you? You go hide anywhere you can hide. <laughs> I mean, I hide behind his desk if I could. Yeah, I wanted to challenge them. If they say go left, I'm going right. Purposely to see how they're going to react. 
I didn't think I'd be playing hide and seek in jail. <laughs> <laughs> You know, every chance I get to put them in an uncomfortable position that training can't train you for, I'm going to do that. This one particular guy, C.O. Jamichael, as an inmate, like, he's he's my freaking worst enemy. I come to jail every day. You know, I'm not scared of nobody, but at the end of the day, I do want to go home the same way I came, and that's, that's everybody objective. So you got to respect that. Always looking at the one to see what's going on. And um, multiple times, Jamichael sleep. I mean, he, he snores, he snores, <laughs> he snores, and he snores and everything. Jamichael, I'm coming for you, bruh. <laughs> Since being in here, I realized that uh, the jail is full of, of, of gangs and gang members, gang members from the Bloods from the Crips, uh, from the Hispanic gangs, the MS-13, and from the uh, uh, Aryan Brotherhood. And I'm a police officer. One of the worst places for a police officer to be is in jail. A whole bunch of snitches and bitch-ass people in the unit right now. I don't give a you the police. I'm gonna beat your ass up. I'm gang affiliated, I have a mama blood. I got like a lot of like gang tattoos on my face and like it's on my body and stuff like that too. The gangs really run this jail. And I'm still suspicious. The gang's suspicious. And if you are the suspect, you're going to get beat up. If someone finds out somebody's police, like, I'm going to go tell all the bros, I'm going to go tell the crib, they're going to go in on him. You get stabbed up. I mean, it's, I've seen it all. So there's this guy in the pod, uh, Zach Miller. Uh, he came up to me initially. Um, we talked a little bit. Uh, he's a tall, thin, white male reading his tattoos and looking at him, and then him talking, uh, you can tell he, he, he's into the, the Aryan Brotherhood. The Southern Brotherhood, we're an organization. We got our own clothes website. We got a motorcycle gang. It's all a white organization. No blacks, no mix, or nothing can't be in the ABs or SBs. Donovan from Kentucky, he's just come in here recently. We just started, we just got linked up with him. We we'll count on him if something pops off. They accepted me almost immediately just by my appearance alone uh, and being a white male. The Aryan Brotherhood are responsible for a lot of the methamphetamine that moves within our pod. Getting in with the with Aryan Brotherhood is, would be a huge opportunity for me to see how the drugs are actually brought into the facility from the time it comes in through intake till it goes to the last person that's using it. I want to see where it goes. Well, can I steal you while they organize the room? This cell. Want to go? See you guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Great. This this is like way more than I want to get involved in. Just listening to that stuff. What do you mean? I feel like I'm learning more than I need to know. Can you explain that a little further for me? It, Angel and Angela are talking about crimes committed on the streets. Me listening to that, feel it, it puts me in more danger if I stay in that room. They are talking about actual businesses like the, the, the business that they're doing on the streets, which is criminal business. I don't want to know about that stuff because later on, I don't want to be at home and somebody's knocking on my door about this stuff. Do you feel, you feel your life's at risk? Yeah. After I leave here, it won't be hard to find me. 
I don't want anybody coming after me. It's like, I'm just trying to make it. But I mean, I feel like I'm in too deep being in that cell. So it sounds like you're saying you want out. I'm ready to go home. With your situation, what you've shared with me, I guess my question for you is what do you want to do? It's just, in my mind, this is something I never thought I would do anyway. So to even do it and be here and be this far in, I can't give up. I can't go back. I can't leave right now. That's not who I am. At this point, I mean, I just feel like it is what it is. It, I can. I feel like I can finish. If in the next day or so I feel like I can't, I give the signal and I just need to go. Okay. Hang in there, okay? You're right. I know I got you know a task to complete. Oh yeah. You good? Yeah. If the information that we give them at the end of this is gonna help, you doing okay, though? then I do feel good about helping because something needs to be done here. The program is almost over. So I got Jamaica in my crosshairs right now. Hey, Jamaica! Hey, fat boy! I pushed him and, you know, fooled with him and messed with him. Fat boy! Because I want to see if he's going to remain professional. Like, when I call him out of his name, when I act a certain way, I want to see how he's going to act. Hey, fat boy! Jamaica! So I already knew today was going to be a bad day, waking up and seeing that Miss Richardson was the SEAL that was on duty. Her nickname in the unit is Screaming Demon, and it started right from the beginning of her shift. Miss Richardson, she's really young. I don't think too many people like her. Everybody that's over there is going on lockdown, spending not enough space. Richardson, we never get along, and uh, she harasses me. She has a kind of like a bad, you know, like a bad girl attitude and screams a lot. If you don't stop being on that door, her mannerisms are very arrogant, um, condescending, even you know, flipping her hair kind of rolling her eyes at you. They gave her a badge, and it went straight to her head. You know, I'm surprised nobody has whipped her ass. Hey, make sure everybody's <laughs> locked down before you let her out. Make sure everybody's behind a locked door before you let her out. One of our lockdown inmates in there, Ashley Caswell. She was yelling and screaming out of her cell at Miss Richardson. And this is a pretty normal occurrence with Miss Richardson and Caswell. They don't like one another. 
Miss Richardson takes away Caswell three times and she leaves her in her cell all day long. That alone is gonna amp you up. Miss Richardson should be the one calming it down and de escalating it. She does not. Uh, so Miss Richardson pops Ashley's cell door to come down and get her meds, and at that point I'm like, wait, uh, this is this is gonna go bad. Watch. You never pop a cell door on an agitated inmate at any level of agitation, but if they're verbally threatening you, you never you never remove that barrier ever. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Go to the I heard it's not Caswell's first rodeo between her and Miss Richardson. I don't gotta give you no explanation. Don't get that. The two of them like to argue back and forth a lot. Call it. Call it. I didn't do nothing for you to walk the game. I didn't do nothing for you to call the game. throwing garbage, trays, juice, just kind of going crazy, uh, as she said she was going to. incident completely was provoked and instigated by Mr. Richardson. It, it could have been 100% prevented. Horrific things can happen if the person in charge of the safety and security of the unit is part of the problem. Pretty much from day one, uh, I was accepted by the Aaron Brotherhood just by my parents alone. And I'm a police officer. So I've got to be super careful. Well, a guy comes up to me, his name's Billy Ray. Uh, he's a short Hispanic male. He's tatted up. He's definitely identifiable as a gang member. The gang tattoos he had were for the, uh, for the Bloods. Uh, I'm familiar with, with, with their, their, their logo. He said, my family's from Louisville, Kentucky. Your face, man, I know your face. I'll never forget a face. So now my, my, my stomach's scrunching, <laughs> heart's racing a little bit because this guy's obviously trying me. It was an unnerving experience at the least, realizing that there's multiple gang members in here. A lot of those gangs, a badge of honor for them is to hurt, kill, or maim a police officer. He leaves me, so I watch him as he walks away. I'm like, okay, who's he gonna talk to next? You know, are they gonna come back to me with, with you know, other get him and other guys. My plan was to see exactly how far I could push things, what information I could get to bring back to the sheriff. 
Uh, and then I had to realize that this is guys that's done real time in prison. They know how to hurt people, they know how to kill people, and they won't hesitate. So, you know, how far do I want to go in, in talking to a lot of the gang members? I had to weigh out uh, safety versus uh, how far I want to push the envelope. I was definitely thinking, you know, did I get in over my head? Richardson's on duty, and we're just hoping it's over with. Again, pill pass happens. And I knew this is really going to be bad, and I couldn't do anything about it. Assad member was sitting right there in front of the deputy's desk. As a side member, they should have taken a nurse there to Caswell's door giving her her meds and been done with it. Almost carbon copy of the day before. But Ashley is even more amped up. She goes even more crazy, throwing anything she can get her hands on. It's out of control right now. If somebody like Caswell has been sprayed like several times, eventually that spray is not going to do anything. The side member did absolutely nothing to help. You needed to react. He didn't react. Saad comes in. It's deja vu to the day before, and it was predictable. You knew it was going to happen. Even like 10 minutes after that, Ms. Richardson has to serve dinner to her, okay. having to open her door again. I knew that it wasn't over. I can tell you right now, she was plotting revenge. Ashley's very upset herself. So she's yelling, she's screaming. Now, even though it's dinner time, when an inmate's that upset, you still should not open the door. As the jail commander, I'm like, no, no, there's no way a CO would do that. That's wrong. I couldn't believe she'd really pop the door. What's going to happen is they're going to gang up on her ass, and she's going to have three or four of them on her, and they're really going to f her up. No, wait a minute. The 
The cell doors pop and it's on. The trustees went in and they had the jug of juice and they had some cleaner. And uh, they went in Caswell's cell and they actually dumped the juice on her bed, soaking all of her stuff in juice and then threw bleach at her. Just looking at some of the inmates who were out, who were looking over at the incident, their faces were shocked. You could tell they were shocked. This is just, this is bad. This is so bad. She is bad. As bad as yesterday was, today's 10 times worse, and I didn't think it could get worse. She was just kind of put back in her cell with all the juice-soaked mattress and, and sheets and her clothes, and she was just left there to sit. The whole situation was horrible. Ms. Richardson shouldn't have been left alone with her just after dealing with her one time. So I could have prevented that whole situation. They could have stayed and served the tray to her. The most disturbing thing was uh, just thinking about Caswell, how fearful she must be to know that she can't, she can't even sleep in her bunk at night. Someone might pop the door and let people come in and kick your ass. How scary is that? No one deserves that. It was heartbreaking and I couldn't do a thing. Michael, I feel like he's a horrible CO. He say we got 20 minutes to eat. We end up getting like 10, 15. And I know I ain't tripping because he the only CO who be acting like that. When I'm on the phone and all of a sudden they just click the button and now they hang up on my phone call, that's really pissing me off. He'll just keep doing them little things. I'm like, all right, bro, you need to chill now. He ain't, ain't going to handle me now. Oh, now, ho, ho. It was just a buildup. And I finally had enough. For about a week, Tony's been testing Jermichael. Uh, just little bits at a time, little bits at a time. White boys treat us better than you treat us. It just went from just a little playful to get a little more serious. I'm looking at like, all right, cool. Let's see how you handle yourself. Tony was pushing his buttons, and uh, I did not know what was going to happen at that point.
he said something along the lines of, I never seen you here in Gaston and this and that. He's trying to say like, oh, you 60 days in. That's completely out of line for an officer to say something like that or even hint that because the inmates look at that like, oh, he a CO, so he got the inside scoop. He knows something that we don't know. So yeah, let's move on him now. Now it's personal, so how you want to play it? I'm going to bring it to you. He's not backing down. You tell me you word. Tony calls a disturbance uh, to Jamichael to see kind of what kind of reaction he was going to get out of Jamichael. Guys are calling, screaming, blah, blah, blah. And they go back and forth, go back and forth. Um, the inmates are definitely observing, watching what's going on, seeing how it's going to go. I think Tony pushed Jamichael to his breaking point. And I'm thinking Tony just got in serious trouble. up there and pops the door and lets them throw bleach on not her even, and pour and juice and on her to get back at her. Not even people that she chose to be out there selves yeah, all day long. Just your buddies. Just, just, yes. It's not right. It's not right. That she can't. Up. I have a whole different outlook now on police. They're supposed to serve and protect people, but situations like that, that, that was not protecting anybody. Well, would it be okay if I came and told you right now to talk to you in the interview room and... How do you feel? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. I just, just... I did not think I could keep getting shocked as much as I am. But. It's, I, I keep using the adjective shocking and that doesn't even encompass, encompass it. Uh, it's the first time in my entire career, I'm embarrassed to say I'm a correctional officer watching what some of these people do here. It's Miss Richardson. She, what I saw her do over the weekend, I, I was literally swallowing vomit. I was sick to my stomach. And I never thought that I would be embarrassed of my profession as, as much as I am in here. I never thought. That, that's pretty surprising for you to say. Um, I've always been very, very proud. <clears throat> I take such pride in what I do, in helping people, in representing all of law enforcement. That's the thing, is one bad person makes all of us look bad. And there's so many good, so much good, but you see this type of bad? No wonder people hate us. No wonder. I hate them, and I'm one of them. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> you know, none of these gals in here have any respect for, their, for law enforcement because that's what they see, and it's wrong. It's wrong. The worst CEO I've ever been around in my entire career just walked back into the unit today when she should have not just been fired, she should have been arrested for what she did the other day. Arrested.
There's over 30 inmates that has wrote grievances on what happened and how she harasses me. All right. When I returned to the pod, Caswell was still on lockdown. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on, but I knew I wanted to check on her and see how she was. My cellmate, Ashley, and I, our hearts are going out to Caswell. Let's go, ladies. I need you to lock down. Let's go. I'm surprised that she's still even here. Yeah, that's... Uh, seriously, seriously. When I heard Ms. Richardson was let go, everyone in the unit was ecstatic. It is a good thing for Etowah County that she is no longer employed here. They fired me because they said I did a wrong, proper use of force, but I was doing what my sergeant asked me to told me to do. I mean, I had no choice. I was doing what my chain of commands told me to do. The whole situation is messed up. Yeah. This guy told my, my cell at the one who was like, hey, they coming to your cell. I had a shank, so I grabbed the shank, flushed that real quick. I'm like, boom, I can't get caught with that. Next thing you know, the door's been open my side, and I'm, of course, I got that deer head like, looks like, what, what's, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'll explain to you a second. Turn around. walking out the cell, people looking. So the first thing I'm thinking is, what's really going on? Like, where are you taking me? He got escorted out by the side guys. They come in, took him off in handcuffs. And I'm thinking, damn, Tony's he's going to be locked down for several days, uh, and I'm going to be alone. It's time to tap out. <laughs> I don't get afraid of a lot of things, but going to SEG was the first time I ever been nervous. Everybody got a breaking point. Tony has a lot of stuff in his in the cell, so those guys were trying to get items. Good. 
shakedown's gonna happen tonight. That did give her time to hide just like stuff that she didn't want them to find. They mean business. It's the real deal. Hey, why they raid the unit like that? Why do you think they did it? Because I was on that. We are? Yeah. All right, listen. I got the key to this door right now. Just watch. Did you just open your door? We've gotten word from our control room. The inmates think that the production and the participants are police. All four's got to come out right now. 